of Edible Thoughts Mix. My name is Stephanie and today I would love to talk to you about hats. I've knit up quite a few hats um, recently and I just wanted to share with you some tips and tricks um, and what I love about knitting hats. Um, the one I am wearing right now is not one that I made recently but um, it is one that I made this year in 2020 and it's a fingering weight color work hat and I can talk about that one as well but um, I just love knitting hats because they are a blank canvas for so many different weights of yarn and there's so many possibilities and the difference between knitting hats and like knitting socks because people talk about socks as being also a blank canvas for lots of things um, is that you only have to knit it once you don't have to knit two for like a pair of socks so it's a great way to kind of try out different patterns if you want to kind of dip your feet into color work and um, just try new things so join me for some hat chat grab a beverage and we'll talk in a bit Are you ready for some hat chat? Um, I have several hats that I would love to share with you today and um, the one I'll start out with is the one that I was wearing earlier. I actually made this hat, let's see, check my notes here, back in February of 2020 which feels like ages ago. Um, it was a test knit for Athena and it is the boba hat. And this is a fingering weight hat, and I wouldn't say that I thought I would ever knit a fingering weight hat because if I'm going to wear a hat, I want to be warm, and if I want to be warm, I probably won't choose a fingering weight yarn. However, that being said, it is so nice to wear even around the house when it's chilly, um, transition times like spring and fall, um, and it folds up so much smaller inside of a coat pocket than like a bulky weight or a worsted weight hat. So I did really enjoy it, um, making it and wearing it. Um, this boba hat, you use uh, US 2 or 2.75 and US 4 and, or 3.5 millimeter needles. So the smaller one's for the ribbing and the larger one is for the rest of the hat. Um, I, I believe I followed the pattern as written. I don't think I made any modifications. Um, I prefer to knit my hats using 16 inch circulars and um, the other options are using double point needles or a longer um, one for magic loop. And I just like the six inch or 16 inch circulars because you can just keep going around and around. You don't have to shift your needles around or worry about anything falling out. Um, and then for the crown decreases, eventually you get to a point where it's just too tight around a 16 inch circular, so you do have to switch to double pointed needles or magic loop at that point. So that's what I do. But um, I love this pattern, it's color work. Um, I don't believe there are really any floats to catch unless you like catching your floats a lot shorter um, or to not not have, or to have shorter floats, not as long of floats. Um, so this is what the inside looks like. Some people prefer going up a needle size for their color work um, compared to where they might just knit stockinette. Um, I didn't do that. I found um, it to be fine. I don't have any tight puckering and the fabric blocked out very smoothly. Um, I do recommend for this pattern using a tonal or solid um, and then a variegated yarn or speckled or some other color. Um, that way you get um, a higher contrast versus if you did two variegated yarns or two speckled yarns, you might not have as great of contrast to see your color work. I used all Malabrigo sock yarn. I knit the 19 inch circumference. My head circumference is 22 inches. I think 21 or 22 inches, I can't remember now. Uh, I believe I used, let's say, 21 grams of the dark brown and I used 24 grams of the variegated. So for 50 grams, um, you get a nice fingering weight hat. All right, so the next hat I'd like to share with you is 
written for our fingering weight, but I believe I use more of a sport, closer to a sport weight yarn. This is Knit and Knit Picks Hawthorne. It's 357 yards for 100 grams, so you could count it as heavy fingering or closer to sport weight. Um, I knit the adult medium for this hat, and this one is for my husband. I did go down one needle size then called for in the pattern. This is the Soulful Slouchy Hat by Tiff, and um, I have found when I knit her patterns that she's a tighter knitter than I am, so to reach gauge I usually go down one needle size. For the main color I used um, this navy that's called Klamath Falls. And then the lighter blue is spring water, the white with speckling is blueberry speckles, and then the yellow is compass. And I, um, let's see, so my needle size here, I use a US 3 for the ribbing, a US 5 for the stockinette portions, and the US 6 for the color work sections. And this pattern comes in toddler, child, adult, small, medium, and large, which is great because um, then you can make one for the whole family. The contrast colors don't use a lot of yardage, so it's a great way to use up little bits of scrap here and there. You could also just make the whole thing in two colors if you want, or use maybe a gradient yarn for your contrast, so it just changes as it goes and you don't have to do anything. Um, and yeah, I highly recommend this pattern. I talked a little bit about it before in a previous episode. Um, I do recommend higher contrast, because if you can't see your color work, what's the point of doing the color work? Um, so yeah, I love how this one turned out. This one is for my husband, and I will be knitting two more for our daughters, and um, I just have to figure out the colors for theirs. Okay, the next hat I would like to share with you is the Kaya May Beanie by um, Jamie Hoffman. So this one is a fun color work pattern because the bottom um, here section, the speckling, if you will, of the color work is so kind of random. Like there is a color work chart, but if you mess up, it doesn't matter because it's meant to look more kind of organic with the um, spreading out of the stitches everywhere. So I think this one is a great one for beginners because if you mess up, it doesn't matter and there are no floats to catch. Um, and this is knit up in worsted weight, so it goes relatively quickly. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. The one modification I made is I made a hole on the top, so I didn't completely finish the crown decreases. I did some yarn overs in this whole section so that I could knit up an I cord and thread it through to tie like a bow for when. Um, I'm not going to put a ponytail or a bun through it, so then it can kind of cinch up and you can tie it together. Um, and then when I do wear it with a ponytail or a bun through it, I can still leave it looped on and just kind of tie a little bow um, on it. But I really like this kind of hat because I do have a lot of hair and I often have it up in a ponytail or a bun and I feel like sometimes when I wear hats with my hair down, it because of all the hair, it kind of like pushes it up so it doesn't sit as nicely on my head. Um, but it's just nice to have that option. So yes, I recommend this pattern. I think it's a quick and easy knit, especially being worsted weight. I believe this one comes in different sizes. I knit the adult small and I used um, the needles US4, which is a 3.5 millimeter for the brim and a US6, which is a four millimeter. Um, and I think a total, I ended up using uh, about 54 grams of yarn total, which is 118 yards. And my kind of gradient marled purple yarn is Cascade Yarns Super 220 Superwash Wave in Grapes. And then the navy heathered color is Cascade Yarns 220 Superwash in Midnight Heather. And then for how deep I knit it, I probably could have gone an inch shorter um, if I didn't want it to be kind of a slouchy fit. But at the length that I knit it at, there is a little bit of a slouch to it, which I think looks nice too. So the next set of hats that I, like, I would like to share with you are all color work, and they are um, inspired by a hat recipe out of this Strange Brew book by Tin Can Knits, and it's under the anthology section. They do have this anthology recipe, if you will, online on their blog for free. And basically it um, gives you a template 
to work your colors or even like a swatch out in the form of a hat, a cowl, or like a tubular cowl, which is amazing. So they give you all the stitch counts in, I believe, um, Aran weight, DK weight, and sock weight. They give you approximate yardages and your gauge and your suggested needles, and it is such a great way to get started. Um, I ended up knitting three hats inspired by different color work charts in the book. Here is one. And by using a marled gradient yarn as your contrast color, it creates interest throughout without you having to weave in a lot of ends. Here's the second one. And I used the same two skeins of yarn for both of these hats. And then here is the last one. And I used the same gradient yarn that I used in the other two as well. And you can see how different it is as it goes. So I started with this one, then I went to this one, and then here's the last one. And this one I think I just kind of knit whatever color work I felt like knitting as I went. But isn't that super fun? So they all use the same recipe. I knit a child size. I did alter my um, needle size a little bit. I think I just went down a few than what's recommended. Um, and I used a worsted weight yarn. So super fun, great gift knit. Hello, um, so we had a slight break in between the last recording and me hopping back on now. Um, and I had to shift locations just for some noise reasons. But um, I wanted to add a couple more th things or thoughts to these color work hats from the anthology recipe by Tin Can Knits. Um, I wanted to share with you a little bit about these faux fur palms that are on the top. I think they're super fun. I First, I think I got them with the end of last year or so, or in the fall of last year. I can't really remember. Some some time in 2019. But what you do is when you work your hats from bottom up, you end up with a tail, like a long end of yarn at the end. And with that, I sew on a button. And then these particular palms have an elastic on the ends so then I use a crochet hook but you could probably use a fork or anything else to like hook it in so then I stick my hook through the top of the hat hook it onto the elastic bring it in and then wrap it around the button so the benefit of being able to have a removable palm is that when you do need to wash the hat then you can take off the palm which is probably better not to be washed, and then wash the hat, and then when it's dry, you can put the palm back on. The other benefit is that if you have multiple palms, you can switch out the color based on your mood or how you want it to match, so that's kind of fun. Um, I made these two together to go kind of as a set, um, as a gift to a pair of siblings, and I did one palm, kind of this off-white color, and the other one is more of a minty green, but since these two hats are knit from the same skeins of yarn, you can also swap, like swap out the palms as you would like. So that's, I think, the only other thing I wanted to add in about that, which is super fun. The last hat I would like to share with you is the Held Together Hat by Lindsay of Lost and Fond. I think this is the fourth held together hat I have made. Um, in this one, I did modify it some. The pattern calls for you to use two sock weight yarns held double, and then you pick out two contrast colors for your striping. So instead of that, I did one strand of lace weight mohair and one strand of sock or fingering weight yarn, and then I just picked one other color. So then I treated the mohair as my main color throughout so I never drop that one out while I add in another stripe. And then I picked this highlighter yellow which is Knit Pick Stroll aptly named highlighter yellow and then use that as my striping and I really like how it looks like 
you would highlight something or um, yeah I just really like how that looked and then this middle one instead of using another color for a striping I just used my main color plus the mohair and it has such a pretty halo to it and it's so soft um, and the bottom is folded up so it's like extra soft so I made a child size version because I wasn't sure how much um, how far my mohair would go because it, it's left over from another project um, and I only had 25 grams of the mohair to begin with but it goes a long way so looking at my notes um, the fingering weight I ended up using 30 grams and it was also remaining from um, other projects and the yellow I only used five grams and then the mohair um, I had 15 grams and the start and I did have a tiny little bit left but it didn't register on my digital scale which only reads down to two grams so um, I must have used somewhere between 13 14 grams maybe of the mohair um, so it's a great way to use up any extra mohair you have from another project it is so light because it's mohair plus the fingering or sock weight and it's so fuzzy and it's super super soft if you don't do mohair I feel like Surrey alpaca um, silk would be a great option as well um, and yeah you can just really change it up the color and the feel depending on what combination you pick like if you did a darker mohair with a lighter fingering weight or if you did the opposite of that or maybe your mohair has variegation in it um, yeah you can do a whole bunch of things so that is super super exciting um, that pattern I've talked about before in previous episodes um, but it does come in multiple sizes from baby through several adult sizes so I feel like this is also a great pattern for gift knitting um, being that it is a ribbed hat it can stretch to fit lots of different head sizes so you don't have to know your recipient's head size just right um, oh yeah the other thing I did differently usually on the top of a hat because you work from the bottom up when you get to a certain number of stitches you usually just kind of thread through and then pull tight and then kind of like reinforce it for whatever reason when I got to the last um, remaining stitches I decided to kitchener it maybe because I've been knitting so many socks and I don't mind using um, the kitchener method for the end of a toe for a sock I actually enjoy doing that and so I did it on the top of this hat too so on the top of the hat you'll see there's no like signature hole for where you pull through it's just flat so you can do that too if you want to it changes the look a little bit but um, not in any particular like positive or negative way it just is what it is so anyway this hat is done I hope you were inspired by this episode to cast on some hats I feel like they are so nice because they're always needed and they are great for gift knitting to people that you know or even to people that you don't know and you can use up all sorts of different yarns I didn't show any that were um like marled from scrappy bits of um, yarn but you can certainly certainly do that with this held together hat like if you didn't even want to follow the striping part of the pattern you could literally just take any bits of yarn and as you run out of one just add in another one and then just knit all the way through um, it is pretty long so with the folded brim you can really use up a lot of different um, scraps if you would like so cheers to being creative and happy knitting bye <music>